Hey everyone, welcome to lesson number two and we'll be covering Photoshop and photo optimization in this one. Uh, I'll try to move as quickly as possible. I keep going over my YouTube time limit, so uh, I'll probably be flying through this one. Hopefully I don't go too fast. Um, so here's the website. I don't use too many images in it. This is uh, the login button CSS. This is CSS. The headers are CSS. Um, the uh, download source code is CSS. Uh, but the the vlog logo is an image, and this page curl is an image, and most importantly, the background is an image. I use the real subtle, um, just a little bit of noise there, just to make it, just to make it a little bit more visually stimulating. Uh, I will be providing all these images in the download source code, so if you don't want to necessarily do this image, or if you just want to follow along, you can download the images there. Uh, so go ahead and open up Photoshop if you have that available and then go to uh, File, New and then we're going to want the width 250 pixels, the height 250 pixels and the resolution 72 pixels per inch and this is important because it is the web standard uh, so anything you're doing for the web 72 pixels is what you want to do it at color mode you want RGB and background contents you want transparent go ahead and click OK and this will be the canvas for our background that we'll be repeating up and down and um, it's really simple basically first thing you want to do is hit edit fill and then we want to choose a color and the color that we want is going to be EB 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 click OK and click OK and there we go now we want to duplicate that so right click on layer one and hit duplicate so now we have a copy of it make sure you're on the very top copy and come down to filter or come up to filter in the menu come down to noise add noise and then you're going to want around 5%. You can play with it as much as you want. Make sure that mo monochromatic is selected. Everything else you can toy with until you find something that you like. I found 5% works pretty well for me. Click OK. On the opacity right above here, change it to 40%. Uh, you can play around with that value too. That's nothing special about 40%. I just found that that is pretty nice um, without being over distracting, but definitely noticeable. Um, and that's it. We've created the background copy. So now we need to go to file and instead of save or save as, we want to save for web and devices. Uh, in this panel, you'll see you'll have uh, different options. You can compare the original to the one you're trying to optimize. Um, you can play around with those. We're just going to stick with the optimize panel for now. Uh, right down here, it's really important. You can see it says 47.23K. Um, that's the file size and we want to get it down as much as possible. So you have some options here. You have these GIF options, you have JPEG options or ping options. Uh, JPEGs are really good in file compression terms, so you can get a really good looking image at a really small file size, um, but you can't do transparency. So that's when pings come into play. So if you have anything that you want to be transparent on your website, you'll want to use a ping. Anything that's not transparent, you'll probably want to use a JPEG. So go ahead and click JPEG for this particular image and then come over here to quality and you can actually even turn down the quality if you want to and you get all the way down to around 35 or so and you really can't notice much of a difference uh, maybe stick to 40 to be safe and you'll see we're all the way down to 4.56k so that is a huge difference in file size and when you add that up on sites that are going to have lots of images it's going to make a really big difference so uh, go ahead and click save I'm not going to do it because I've already done this um, but when you save it you're going to want to save it in localhost or whatever you named your file uh, that PHP will run on in the SS blog we created under the images folder. So save it in there. Save all of these files that you make in there. Uh, go back to Photoshop. And um, the next thing we're going to do is create that page curl. So we're going to go to layer, flatten image. And now we need to make it workable. It locks it when you do that. So you want to do layer from background. Click OK. Now we can edit this layer. Go to image, edit, I'm sorry, edit, transform, warp. Uh, grab the left top handle here. You have all these handles you can work with. Just grab the left top one. And all we're wanting to do is really make a straight line. So you can tell I'm making a straight line here. Now grab this handle and you can drag it up and out however you think. I think that's, you know, that's, that's probably OK. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll be covering some of this up later and I think that works just fine. Hit enter when you're done and we have a pretty straight line here. Now go to your pen tool. Your pen tool probably looks like this but if you click and hold on it you can choose different types and we want the very normal pen tool for now. 
just outside of the canvas, click and make a selection, and then somewhere towards the center, click, and then somewhere just off the, oh, I'm sorry, click just off the canvas, and then click towards the center, but hold the left click down and pull out. <coughs> Excuse me. This will create that little curl that makes the page look like it's curling. Um, now click just off the canvas up here, and you'll notice it gets warped, but we can come back and fix that, and then click the original point to close the circuit, basically. Uh, come back to the pin tool, click and hold, come down to convert point tool, and here we can click this one that turned out kind of strange and drag down, and it lets us get the same effect as the first one. Hit enter when you're done with that, and it didn't disappear even though it looks like it did, it went to the paths panel. So there's the path, you can right click on the work path and do make selection. Click OK, and now we have a selection that we can fill in. So uh, come back to layers, create a new layer by hitting command, shift, in, or doing layer, new, layer. Click OK, and then we're going to fill it in, hit shift F5, and we're going to use white. Click OK, and then uh, double click on the layer 1 panel, come down to gradient overlay, and check mark it and, and uh, select it. This is the layer style panel and you can add so many cool layers to all these uh, or styles to all these layers. It's really unbelievable what you can do just within this box right here. Uh, click on the angle. Let's change the angle first. You want the angle to point the same direction the page is pointing so somewhere in the 40s, 45 degree angle will be just fine. Uh, maybe change the scale to be a little bit smaller. Um, go ahead and click on the gradient itself and drag the white swatch to the left and then click the black swatch to make it a little bit lighter click OK and then click just to the right of the white swatch and you'll have that same color posted on the other side and we want this actually to be pretty light so there we go and as you can see there we go it's a page curl already creating uh, to really sell the whole bit you need to add a drop shadow to it uh, maybe turn the opacity of the drop shadow down a little bit intensify the size a little bit um, maybe change the the distance and uh, I think that's pretty much it. Click OK. Uh, to deselect this hit Command D or you can hit select, deselect and uh, there we go. Now we just need to do the background really fast. So hit uh, Command Shift N, create a new layer, click OK, drag this layer to the bottom and then just do an edit, fill and then choose color and then I just chose like a all sixes. Click OK and click OK and there we have that filled in. Now you can tell there's some I have some issues here and I probably need to clean this up but it'll be okay for the tutorial. I will provide you with the original in the download section. Um, go ahead and duplicate this layer because we will be manipulating it a little bit. Oh oops I'm sorry. Undo delete layer. Duplicate layer not delete layer. Click OK and then choose a brush that has some feathering to it and about 300 pixels in size. Make sure you have black selected as your color and um, then go ahead and just fill it in a little bit. It gets dark. This way it'll look like it's rolling up and this is the shadow that's created. Um, now click on that same layer, click on the eraser, get a feathered brush but much smaller. Then you can kind of just click and it'll like clean it up a little bit and it kind of creates that idea of a shadow back there. And that's a little bit dark, so you can even come in here and change the opacity. Let's do like 65%, and there you go. You have a page curl. You have the shadow back here, the shadow underneath. You save it just the same. Go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Uh, you want to use JPEG, and then I would leave it on 60 quality. I think that's just fine. So I'm going to cancel that since I've already done that. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about a quick way to make a logo for a web page. Uh, we'll do a width of 200 or 500 pixels and we'll leave everything else the same. Um, you wouldn't want to create a logo for like a corporate company like this. You'd want to use like vectors that you can resize to your heart's content and it won't get pixelated. But this is a quick way to create some graphics for a website. I just kind of want to show you that layers panel again. Uh, let's go ahead and fill this in. So Shift F5, choose a color, and we want that same background color. So EB, 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 and click OK. And now click the text tool here and we'll add some text. And we'll just write SS blog. I don't even know what font I'm using. I'm just going to go with this. 
uh, drag it to the center, double click on it, and uh, back to the layer style style panel, and I'll show you how quickly you can change the way these fonts look. Uh, go ahead and add a drop shadow, and let's take away some of the darkness from that, and uh, let's do a, let's do a little bit bigger size, but a little bit closer to it. I think that looks okay. Let's do a bevel and an emboss. Go ahead and check mark it and click it, and then let's soften it all the way so it's real soft. We can turn the depth down just a tad. Maybe turn the size up just a hint. Um, now we can come down to gradient overlay. Actually, let's do stroke first. We can add a stroke to it, an outline, and uh, let's do like a really green blue or something. That, I don't really like that. That's okay. Um, and I think I'll just leave everything default there. That's fine. Now we can do a gradient overlay. And a lot of times you can just come through here. You can add stripes to it or different techniques. Uh, a lot of times, like, I think that one looks pretty nice. You can go in here and change the colors a little bit if you want to. Uh, kind of showing you how to do that already, so I'm really not going to go into it too much. But I kind of just want to show you the gist. I added a little blue highlight along the top. You can control the opacity up here. Right now the opacity is zero. If you wanted to give it like a five or something to give it a little bit of a touch, click OK. You can add an inner glow to it. Sometimes this is cool. Uh, let's choose a blue color. And then uh, let's turn the opacity down, but let's turn the size up a little bit, and you can kind of see how that glows coming in. Uh, just pretty cool effects that you can do really quickly, and I think that looks good enough for now. I just kind of wanted to show you that. If you were going to save this, you'd want to turn the background off. You would want to go ahead and crop it out. Get you probably want to get closer. I'm not going to get too tedious with this because I am on a time limit. And then file save for web and devices. And this time you'd want to choose a ping. And you can just leave it on the default settings, but ping 24 and hit save, and then save it in that images folder within the SS blog uh, project that we set up. So basically that's it. I just wanted to show you a quick rundown of how to use Photoshop and how you can uh, quickly throw together pretty good images for the web. Um, hopefully I'll catch you in the next lesson. It is, we'll be writing some HTML markup finally. We'll be talking a little bit about HTML5 and how you can start using it today on, and almost all browsers will accept it if you uh, know some of the little tricks that are out there. Um, so hopefully I'll catch you over there. Thank you guys so much for